In the heart of the Panamanian jungle lies a chocolate factory. It's owned by Mavis Ortiz and is very special because the chocolate it creates is made from organic sustainable cocoa farmed under fair conditions. I want to get the word out that chocolate isn't candy. Cocoa is a plant that confers health and well-being. Ortiz gets the raw cocoa for her chocolate from a nearby village. In Soledad de Risco, in Panama's Bocas del Toro province, the inhabitants have preserved an ancient tradition. In accordance with the practice of their indigenous forebears, the Nobe, they cultivate cocoa in a particularly green and sustainable manner. Jungle clearing and plantations are nowhere to be seen, nor do they use pesticides. Instead, they grow cocoa in the middle of the jungle. We harvest some trees and use them to build our timber houses. We grow various crops for food. And of course, the cocoa that we sell commercially. We use an agroforestry system. We don't create monoculture cocoa plantations. That's just not in keeping with our tradition. Cocoa specialist Mavis Ortiz was also convinced by the merits of their natural cultivation method. She decided to set up her artisanal chocolate factory right next door five years ago. She wanted to use the best possible organic cocoa, so she decided to work with the cocoa farmers from Soledad de Risco. Only their traditional cultivated cocoa grown in the heart of the jungle meets her requirements. The soil is protected by leaves. It's healthier for people because no chemicals are used. Cocoa plants have a good yield and their cultivation is environmentally friendly when they get the right amount of shade, neither too much nor too little. Besides cocoa, rare flora also grow among the trees, as well as plants used for medicinal and ritual purposes by the Nobe, the country's largest indigenous people. But industrial cocoa cultivation is increasingly squeezing out the old methods. Agroforestry graduate Mavis Ortiz would like to help stop that. That's why she regularly holds training sessions for cocoa farmers, so they can further refine their cultivation methods and improve the quality of the beans. Chilina would like to know how to choose the best branch for grafting. Mavis Ortiz is particularly keen to support the female cocoa farmers. She wants to provide them with an income of their own, so they're not solely dependent on their menfolk. That's why she pays 60% above the going rate. The women are often unseen. You don't hear them. They don't complain about working hard. I would like their work in cocoa farming and chocolate production to be more highly regarded. That goes down well with the women. It's important for us women to get organized. If we join together, we'll reap the benefits. We look after our children, we feed them and educate them, and this would allow us to earn more money to give us more opportunities. Ortiz processes the raw cocoa on her nearby finca. First, it's left to ferment for several days, and then it has to dry. The beans are already becoming flavorful. This is when they start to taste like chocolate during this process. Normally I taste the cocoa beans after they've dried. Then you can tell if the harvest and the fermentation process were good. And that's what matters. Her artisanal chocolate business, Mayame Cacao, is trying to make a name for high-quality local chocolate. Ortiz sells it online, at trade fairs and other events, and in stores across Panama. She wants to change the image of chocolate as just a sweet treat. Instead, she sees it as a food packed with healthy ingredients. 
y que esos ingredientes están dentro. These substances are found in the cocoa pod. And if we want to retain the special qualities of cocoa, then we have to eat it with as little sugar as possible. That's the message I want to spread, and I have the feeling that it's becoming more and more widely accepted. Maya May Cacao is not the only chocolate company that employs natural cultivation methods and is sparing with its use of sugar. In the last five years, several small Panamanian businesses have set themselves the goal of making healthy, high-quality chocolate. Ortiz herself enjoys chocolate most when it's liquid. When I drink this cup of hot chocolate, I have the feeling, wow, you can taste where the cocoa comes from the farm that it comes from, the characteristics of each individual cultivation site. I really savor it. I appreciate it. I recognize the potential of the cocoa produced by every family.